Help support our coverage with a free account on Privacy, the service that keeps your bank information private when shopping online. Take control of your subscriptions and other recurring payments, plus pause and close privacy cards at any time. And get $5 right now to try the service at collision.live slash privacy. Hello, Internet. I'm Scott, and this is Plug Hits Live Presents. It's June, and that means it's startup month for us, and we've got another great startup here with us. Hello. Hello, hello. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Go ahead and introduce yourself for me. Yes. So my name is Alex, um, and I'm the lead of KVT CMS, which is an open source test management system. Uh, we are serving other test engineers, uh, helping them to collect information about what they do, how they do it, and organize um, their job, make it better. Okay. Uh, test management's a big, a big deal. Um, as a software engineer myself, I <laughs> spend a lot of time thinking about how tests work. Uh, so if, if somebody wanted to implement this, where would it fit into their workflow? Um, so, you know, let's, let's uh, examine a typical workflow that you do is, you know, you build your software um, and then hopefully you invest into some uh, testing. It uh, can be manual, it can be automated um, and everything's cool, everything works. And then you want to uh, update your product, add the new features, fix some bugs then you have to retest, uh, and that's where we come in. Uh, so instead of uh, remembering everything that you need to do or maybe keeping it um, in some spreadsheet or on paper, um, you will use systems like KVT CMS, input all the information into the system, um, and then you actually start using the system to uh, organize your workflow, to organize your day. Um, so the, the test management system is what drives uh, all the activities that you do. Um, everything's in there, and we say, in the industry, we say, if it's not in, in KVT CMS, then you don't test it. <laughs> Un uh, understood. Yeah, yeah. And, so, uh, so, sure. in, so let's, let's talk about uh, a software product, right? A consumer yeah. product, like 80% of what's behind you, right? So, uh, we've got a product, we're developing a product, we've got our engineers, we've got our our product managers, our project managers, our testers, all all in the world. Um, who is interacting with this uh, and what information are they giving and receiving uh, to and from the right. system? Um, so the primary, uh, the primary user for Kiwi would be um, the test engineer, the quality engineer, and uh, okay. most likely their manager. So the QE department manager or a QE lead, depending on the um, organization structure. Mm -hmm. Um, the information that they will uh, input into the system is strictly technical, so that would be your test plan, your general approach um, to how would you, um, you know, want to test your products. So let's say, you know, let's say it's a mobile app um, and you care only about the, um, the iOS platform, iPhone. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't care about, about Android, so that's what you're going to do. You say, well, my approach is focused only on iOS, I don't care about other platforms. Let me do everything that I can do uh, to make sure iOS users are happy. And then you drill down uh, into more details and you are going to specify what we call test scenarios. Um, so these are your exact steps to, um, to reproduce. Um, you know, I'm gonna check in my mobile app, uh, try to log in with a Facebook account, see if that works. Try to log in with email and password, see if that works. Uh, maybe try to log in with an invalid passport, password, see that it actually does not work and gives me a meaningful error message and et cetera, et cetera. And then this is how you define um, your actions. And then you start executing those actions. And so for every product build could be um, once a day, could be several times a day even. Um, then you are going to repeat um, and mark the results pass, fail, pass, fail. And then at the end of the day, you have a lot of data points. Um, so that's uh, how you input into the system. And then the output that you get, the information that you receive is um, you have uh, of everything that's been around, that's been happening uh, in, in terms of testing uh, for your product. Could be only one team, could be hundreds of teams if it's something very complex. Mm -hmm. And then you can take a look at everything. We do have um, what we call uh, testing telemetry, um, which is a nice charts and graphs and reports. So you can take a look at this. Um, and if you're happy with what you're seeing, um, everything looks green. Uh, nothing of importance is broken. Uh, so. Uh, you are happy with that. You build your confidence in your products. Um, that's what you get out of the system. 
um, and then you can say yes i'm happy with the current state of my product um, if need be i can release today or tomorrow uh, push new version to my customers uh, so they can experience uh, the new stuff in my in my product um, that's you know that's what we provide okay so is what kind of testing are we talking about here are we talking about like human interface testing are we talking about pipeline testing mm -hmm. uh is this is this intended to fit into the pipeline or have uh, people interacting with it where does this go i got it um so it's honestly it can be any type of testing that we're talking about um, okay. and any any you know could be integration testing could be ui testing okay. um, could be uh, people interacting with the platform, could be fully automated, um, could be other software integrating with your, uh, with your own software products um, as well. Um, the system is designed to be very flexible and kind of to be generic um, so that the actual team using it, they have the freedom to implement their own workflows and they have the freedom to decide uh, um, how much uh, of the existing activities that they do, how much of that they plug in, into KVT CMS. Uh, we do provide some integrations uh, with third-party systems. We do provide plugins for um, test automation frameworks um, that can understand your test suite and feedback the data to us. Um, and also we do provide a very flexible API interface. Um, so you are free to go wild with this as well. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's, yeah, it's really up to the team. We do have teams which are relatively small. And so the only thing that they do is uh, they go through the steps um, and they are waiting for everything to be green to say that it's passing at the end of the day. Um, and we do have other customers who are bigger teams. Um, they have test plans with thousands of test cases um, and they distribute all, all of this uh, uh, to, to multiple people within a team and it manage the workload between different people. If somebody is more productive, um, they can just offload more work to them so that they can finish on time. Um, if they're running out of time for the current cycle, uh, they can prioritize uh, specific uh, work items uh, which haven't been tested up to, up to now. So bump the priority, make sure that it's covered, and then everything else which is lower priority, well, we'll leave it for the next cycle. Um, gotcha. So, so you you design your sprint. You say this is what we're going to accomplish in this sprint. These are the new test items that are going to be involved in that sprint they go in uh on every build whether that be on every check-in or a nightly build or whatever that looks like mm -hmm. we go through this process and when when everything is green then we say hooray uh all of our sprint goals have been met and everything is everything is safe yeah yeah but that's Perfect. you know the, this is the best case scenario in practice it doesn't work like that <laughs> I mean, if, if everything is green all the time, we, we, we are going to be out of a job. The reality is, you know, in, in practical terms, it's much more complex and it's, you know, things are not green all the time. It's most of the time they're actually red. Something is always broken, but it's not critical enough uh, to, to block your release. So you're happy, mm -hmm. you know, you can live with it. It doesn't matter that it's broken. You can live with that. Right. But you do know, you know, you do need to have... Um, the information why is it broken and how important it is right. in order you know not to break your confidence so you can't log in that's a bad that's a, a high priority problematic red but yeah when you put the wrong thing in there's a period missing at the end of the uh, username and password not found message less critical we yeah. can we can probably exactly. go to market without the period yep, exactly exactly okay Got it. And how did you decide uh, that this was a product that you needed to be involved in? Well, uh, thank you for this question. So I didn't actually decide; like it's uh, just happened by coincidence. Okay. The uh, the so KVT CMS started as an open source project way 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 long, you know long ago, uh, more than ten years ago. Um, it was started by a prominent open source vendor. Um, they've they work on it internally, they, then they've um, open source it, push it to, to GitHub. Uh, subsequently, it was uh, abandoned. Um, and a couple of years after it, it has been abandoned, um, I came across it. Um, I've been working as a testing consultant at that point in time. Um, and we did need a similar system for the customer that I was involved with. Uh, so just took the, uh, the existing code base from, from GitHub, um, installed it at the customer, um, started using it. 
Um, very quickly, we realized that it's actually broken. There were quite a lot of problems with the existing code base. Um, gotcha. So my job uh, from, from a consultant, it turned out into, um, into actually fixing the software uh, to make it at least somewhat usable. Um, then I continued um, uh, doing this uh, a little bit more alone. Um, then we switched to being a hobby open source project. Um, then we switched to actually building a team that's going to be behind the project. Uh, then building up the community. Um, and through all these switches, all these um, kind of changes that we go through, the code base has been improved. We've changed it uh, probably three times already uh, up to the point that it's completely different from, uh, from the original. Uh, we have changed the name and the branding several times uh, until we arrived at the current branding and uh, the current name, KBT CMS. Uh, and um, very late in the cycle, um, we decided to open it up for paying customers, just um, initially just as an experiment to see what's going to happen. Uh, is somebody actually going to pay for this? Uh, and lo and behold, people actually started paying for this and we saw traction. Uh, like we didn't even know that there's going to be demand. Uh, we were um, we were building Docker images ourselves uh, just to make it easy to host the demo, um, and we decided, well, let's open up uh, these things and let's start publishing the Docker image on the internet and see if somebody's going to download it. Um, and uh, that was the best decision ever that we did. We have almost two million downloads today, Ooh. and again, that's totally unexpected. Uh, we didn't even know, you know, that's going to happen. Um, and we saw a lot of traction. We, we achieved a lot of uh, these important open source milestones. Um, and it came to the point um, where we, we kind of realized that we cannot continue doing this the partisan way. Um, and we need to build a business around it. And we need to approach it more like a startup, like a business venture, um, mm -hmm. in order for us to continue working on the product and making it better. Uh, and uh, that's why we are here today. Gotcha. Well, that's that's quite an origin story that it's not what i was expecting to hear at all <laughs> uh that's that's really cool so where do you see this going over the next 12 24 months yeah well the focus right now is just uh, building up the customer base um okay. so that we can uh, sustain the team and help us grow better um, grow, grow us faster um in terms of just technicalities uh we do have uh, uh, our roadmap publish uh, on our website. We do want to work on uh, more integration with third-party systems, with third-party tooling. Um, that's that's our focus for the moment. Um, so we are very responsive to feedback from our community, from our customers. Uh, whenever we see um, issues that are um, critical, uh, bugs which are important, we try to act on them quickly, uh, just so that we can improve the product, uh, just so that you know the customers, the user base are happy. Um, and also, that, you know, that's what they're paying us for. They do pay for support. They do not pay for the software itself. Okay. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's how we go about it. Um, we have built a strong engineering team, um, and we would like to continue building up the team, uh, building up all, you know, the, the technical expertise within the team, um, and making our customers happy. Very cool. Well, it sounds like it sounds like a great product. Something that I could see. Uh, coming into my workflow, <laughs> as well as most engineers. Um, for those who want more information on your platform and uh, maybe how to uh, get started with it, how can I get that info? Um, yeah, so this is where I just Google Kiwi TCMS, so K-I-W-I-T-C-M-S um, dot O-R-G. Uh, you can also explore um, the latest version. We do have a live demo website and you can do uh, absolutely everything on the live demo website. Um, so, you know, free, uh, feel free to go wild on that to just experiment, <laughs> see if it fits your workflow. Um, and you can use the demo website manually, just click around through the web interface, um, or you can use any of our um, API clients, API plugins, uh, just to kind of feed, feed in some information automatically to the demo website uh, and wow. see how that works. Uh, we do have extensive documentation as well, um, in both uh, technical documentation of how to deploy the system, um, and also user documentation uh, with explanation of you know uh, relationships between uh, different parts of the systems uh, and some ideas how you may um, how you may use that in your workflow. Very cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to come talk to me today. Uh, I'm I'm really excited to go explore this myself. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, and you know, happy testing. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. And that does it for that conversation, but we've got others uh, right now. And if you check out plugkitslive.com or head over to our YouTube channel, you can see this conversation and others over there. Mm -hmm.